granny, I salute you for being the wonderful mom and grandmother that you are. It was there at St. Lucia that she gave her life to Christ and started attending the nearby Baptist church. She caught the eye of a young visiting minister <laughs> who fell for her at first sight. For my mom, she said, it was all right. <laughs> but she was smitten too. She became the wife of Philip St. Clair Cupid on August 1st, 1965, and together they began an incredible journey. She sang beautiful duets with my dad before many of his sermons and was a pretty decent alto. When my dad traveled to preach, she would hold down the whole fort and many times had to pack up the family to begin pastoring wherever God led them. Be fruitful and multiply was the command, and they obeyed. <laughs> Sometime later, along came Priscilla, followed by Sharon, Monica, and then finally, my dad was overjoyed, a son. <laughs> Philip. Mom thought she was done, and then nine years later, there was a final surprise. <laughs> I remember Dad smiling, I don't know if he remembers this, but I do, and saying, one more for the quiver. <laughs> While my mom looked at him and quivered. <laughs> she knew was born and was a delight for Mom and the entire family. In 1987, she packed up her family once more and emigrated to the United States where once more she established a home. This island woman lived in the U.S., but she was island to the bone. <laughs> Yulali was mommy or mom to her children. To dad, she was Ren or honey. <laughs> to Sydney and Olivia, she was Nana. And to many others, she was Sister Cupid or Vanessa. She wore all of those titles with dignity, wisdom, and some sass. A simple woman who was never enthralled by glitz or frivolity, but was proud of who she was and proud of her family. She had many sayings that were simple, but packed a punch with wisdom. There was no need for too many long lectures, just a few of those one-liners. Many was straight out of her grandmother's mouth, as she would quote her many times. As children, we would stare at her, blink a few times, like, okay, move on. But then we would ponder on them, and the wisdom of the words would gradually unfold. There are some we still have yet to figure out, like, as you land, you come ashore. <laughs> Still don't know what that means. Today I'm going to share a few with you. You will bring your pigs to find market. Which meant, you better get it together. Straighten out your nonsense. Figure it out. Don't have no hat how then you can reach it. For us that meant, live within your means and what's manageable for you. If greedy waits, hot will cool. <laughs> Don't try to get everything you want all at once. Take your time, plan, and things will come together eventually. I brought you into this world and I will take you out. <laughs> For a while, I thought that was actually legal. <laughs> yeah, no, it was serious. But then I realized it was an empty threat. <laughs> but it still kept us in check. <laughs> Withdraw your feet from your neighbor's house, lest she get weary of thee and drive thee out. <laughs> Meaning, you visit it, not often, and not too long. <laughs> there is more in the motto beside the pestle. That was her perceptive way of saying, saying there are many sides to a story, and stuff you're not telling me. The next couple of sentences.
things actually flow together as a package deal and tell a story. And was often accompanied with the wagging of her finger close to your nose. Yes. You're too proud to beg and too far upright to steal. If you steal, you will lie. And if you lie, you will kill. But the truth will set you free. But be sure your sins will find you out. <laughs> How could we possibly go wrong after that? Mom was the main disciplinary. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> and she made sure we stayed in line. And yes, she could run. I was the child who, if you wanted to spank me, you had to earn it. So I would take off running with mom on my heels while my siblings were pleading with me to stop running because it was going to get worse. <laughs> the butt whooping would be accompanied by another saying, spare the rod and spoil the child. The days when she did not catch me, she would say, wait till your father gets home, which was music to my ears, because that was easier. <laughs> Our mother taught us many things as young kids that hold us in good stead today. Good manners, respect, and sound moral values based on biblical principles. And for that morning, we thank you very much. Mom loved her grandchildren fiercely, and their bond was special. Olivia spent much of her early childhood with her, and Sydney would try to keep her when she went to visit in California. She was a mom bear when it came to protecting her husband and her children, and would tolerate no one who sought to harm or slander them. Even though there were moments when she would lovingly want to knock off Dad's head, <laughs> no one else had better touch a hair on his head. A godly woman who taught us along with Dad how to love the Lord, how to pray, to read us Bible stories and build our faith. As an adult, Mom, as an adult, Mom became our best friend, a confidant, and our biggest cheerleader in life. When we arrived home with our childhood or adult goals, she was there to listen, advise, or admonish if necessary. We never had to wait for mom to come home. Mom was a housewife, or as I like to call her, a homemaker, because she made a home. Roles that many people today see as too traditional, but it was her dedication and selfless sacrifices that ensured we were always well fed and well dressed. There were times when money was tight and mom would make miracles with a dollar. She could cook. Yes. And her cuisine spanned many Caribbean islands and she embraced some international as well. She often wished my dad would eat more than sweet potatoes, peanuts, and crackers. <laughs> When family would visit, you can bet she was going to create some pache. Green face, something to send home with them. Cake, home, penny, ginger beer, green face salad, fish cakes, coconut bread, you name it. She has passed that skill on to most of her children and to both Olivia and Sydney. Her sense of humor and the many stories she told, will keep us smiling and repeating. Remember when mom, her friendships were long and loyal, and mom was adopted by many. And if COVID hadn't put restrictions on us, this would be a whole different scene today. Pauline surely adopted her as a sister. Tanti Ben, as she was affectionately called, will always be remembered. The younger Vanessa had a simple elegance with a hint of Jackie Bow. She loved wearing brooches, and I'm wearing one to honor her today. And she had quite a collection which we would secretly go into her bedroom to admire. Her hats were perched to the side with a swash of lace over one eye. Her slender 5'9 frame did not require the lift of heels. And so she stuck to low or kitten heels. The more, 
the more mature Vanessa maintains some of that style, but she leans more towards look. I just want to be comfortable. <laughs> when mom became ill, she began the battle for her life. It spanned about three or so years. In the early stages, she could still not be matched with her energy and kept on going. She would come to my house and embarrass me in the garden. She believed that God would heal her, but her sometimes fragile human faith would waver. We were always there to remind her. One day she said to me, God will heal me whether on this earth or in heaven. She rested on God's promises until the end. And so I say to death, where is your sting? And grave, where is your victory? She has won, for she is absent from this earth, but she is present with the Lord. When a mother dies, we lose a piece of who we are, the person whose history provides the beginning of our own. But you have nurtured us so completely that what remains of us will be sustained until we meet and become whole again. That a grandma, it is well with you, and we are always here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Priscilla. If I may add, my name being Dominic, she was the only one that called me Dom Z. <laughs> and she would say, Dom Z, how you make your bed, you will be down. Dom Z, all that glitter is a Dom Z, Every skin teeth is not a grin. There was many, 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 many things that our parents and grandparents told us. And for sure, it laid the foundation of our lives. That is to say, whenever we find ourselves in trouble, we can always reflect on our parents and grandparents sayings, as Priscilla so appropriately put it, in one line. At this time, we're going to have Pastor Bill Davis come forward with his sermon.
plants can talk to people too. Mm -hmm. And the message I would like for you to hear is that it's not good for man to be alone. That was God's design. He knew it would not be good for us to be alone. God created us to have a relationship with Him and with one another. It was His design. There's a great hymn called In the Garden. It says this in the first line. I come to the garden alone. Now, while we may come to the garden alone, God never intended us to stay that way. And the chorus of that song says this. He walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. God never leaves us alone. One of the reasons services like this are so difficult is because we were created to have relationships. So when somebody we love is separated from us, it's hard. It's sad. It's the way God designed us. The relationships that bring us the greatest joy are the ones that will bring us the greatest sadness when they're gone. It's just two sides of the same coin. They go together. Young children need to be separated from their parents. Children could, they can care less about their parents until you try to leave them somewhere. Have you noticed that? Then they don't want to be separated. It's not just true of children. It's true of us as adults as well. We are created in the image of God who desire companionship with us. While Jesus was on earth, he had friends. And when one of his close friends, Lazarus, died, the Bible simply says Jesus wept. It wasn't because Jesus didn't have any hope. He actually knew he could raise him from the dead, and exactly that's what he did. So it's not a sadness of no hope. It was just being separated. And it reminds us of how God created us, that we would find great joy in relationships with one another and with Him. You can be grateful this morning that you're sad. Now that may sound strange, but the reason you're sad is because your Heavenly Father created you to have wonderful relationships. And when you're separated, it brings sadness. So when you shed tears, during times like this, let it be a reminder that God gave you a great gift. Somebody worked being sad about it when they were gone. And the message is tru truly worthy of our tears because she was a great gift from God. When we are separated from someone we love, it's okay to me because God designed us that way. It's it's a relationship like that, a close relationship where we are sad when they're gone, is what God had in mind when he said it's not good for us to be alone. We may come to the garden alone, but God will not leave us that way. He created us to have a relationship with him and others. The second garden I would like us to walk through together is the Garden of Gethsemane. This was the garden in the Bible where Jesus prayed the night before he died for us. This is that garden that Jesus went through alone. So we would never have to be alone. Here's what it says in Matthew 26, 36 through 39. When Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here a while while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, Father, my Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Jesus would pray that prayer two more times that night. And he was willing to go through that agony for us, to go through that garden, and to do God's will so that we would never have to be alone. Jesus was willing to be alone, to be separated from his Father, so you and I would never have to be separated. The message of this garden that I want you to hear today is Jesus was willing to be alone, so we do not have to. He was separated from his Father. Because Jesus went through the garden, we never have to be separated from God. Because Jesus went to the cross, Vanessa is with the Lord. That's the promise. She is not alone. As we listen to the message of this guard, we're reminded of a couple truths. First one, death is not God's desire for us. If it was, he wouldn't have died for us so we could live forever. He desired that death wouldn't be the end. And 
And so we are reminded that death is not our final end. Death no longer has any power over us. The resurrection reminds us of that. Death is also a reminder that life is too short. Every single person here would agree that they wish they had more days with Vanessa. Life is just too short. And God knows that. It's much longer. He gave us eternity, not just now. But it also reminds us that relationships are the most important things in life. Right. Not stuff and not things. Right. You miss Vanessa? Not her stuff. Right. People are the only things that go on into eternity. God would say spend time with people, not stuff. So it's times like this we're reminded, because of what God did, that He doesn't want us to be alone. Because of what Jesus did in the garden, that we never have to be alone. We never have to be separated from God ever again. And then I would like for us to visit one more garden. One more garden this morning. And it's the garden of heaven. There's another garden yet to come. It says this in Revelation 22, 1 to 5. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city. And his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of the lamp or the light of the, of the sun, for the Lord God will be will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. In this garden in heaven, we see a familiar tree. It's the tree of life. It's the tree that God had in the garden of Eden. And what I think he wants to say is welcome home. Mm -hmm. The way I designed it in the beginning, God says, is still my plan to spend eternity with you. And so he did all this through his son so we could, again, be in that garden with him, with the tree of life. No more darkness, no more pain, no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more, no more separation. God says, welcome home. Every summer when I was growing up, I grew up in Orlando, and I would spend a month with my grandparents in Illinois. They lived on a farm, so my parents would let me spend a month with them. And my parents sometimes would put me on a plane in Orlando and send me up there, then they would come a month later to pick me up. I remember a couple times when I got on the plane that I was sad. And a couple times there was actually tears that came down my face. I had no idea why. I was going somewhere I loved. I was looking forward to seeing my grandparents, but it was that separation from my parents. The only thing my parents saw were the tears coming down my face. What my parents did not see was the joy and the smile of me jumping up and down in Illinois when I got to see my, my grandparents. That's how it is for us. We get to see the pain, the suffering, the separation. We don't yet get to see the jumping up and down in heaven. When we get to see the Lord. When we get to see our loved ones in the whole. But God says, trust me. Because of what I did on the cross, because of what I did for you, uh, there's that hope that we all have. That we will have this wonderful reunion. And even though we saw only the difficulty, the suffering on this side, Trust me, because of Jesus and because Vanessa loved the Lord, she is filled with joy and health and jumping up and down in the arms of her Heavenly Father and walking through that wonderful heavenly garden. Vanessa had a relationship with the Lord and is now enjoying her reward. She has experienced that relationship. Here's what it says in Revelation 22, 12 through 14. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me. And I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, and they may have the right to the tree of life. And may go through the gates into the city. Because of Vanessa's relationship with the Lord, she has the right to the tree of life. And she's enjoying that. Death is a time we often feel alone. 
but it should remind us that God has prepared a garden for us where we will never be alone. Picture Vanessa in the Garden of Heaven, walking beside the God she has faithfully loved and served her entire life. And I think she would say to us what God may be saying to her. God has spoken to his word that I think he will speak directly to us. When we get to be face to face, and I think he might say this, I will never leave you alone. I love you. Welcome home. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the way you created us. Even though we have messed it up in so many ways, you have given us precious gifts. Right now, there's grief because one of those precious gifts is away from us. But Father, we would not hold her back from experiencing the joy and the fullness and the happiness and the heavenly garden that she gets to experience. Father, we pray for this family that as they go through the grief, may they have hope and may everyone here reflect on the relationship with God, not only the relationship they have with Vanessa, but the relationship with you, so that they will get to enjoy that wonderful reunion as well. Father, again, thank you, and we pray that uh, you are caring for Vanessa, and that you have been honored, and she has as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
Amen. The Lord tells us to be absent from the body is to be present in the Lord. If there's anything we're going to take from this service this morning, as Pastor Bill put it, <coughs> are what's most important. Relationships is what's most important. Life is short and we have to make the best of everything. Do not wait for special occasion. Do not wait for retirement. Do not put anything on the back burner. Embrace your loved ones and your friends like it was the most important thing, like it is the most important thing. But truly, I knew mom very, I, I've been around a very, very short period of time. We had Christmas dinner and some stuff coming together. But there's nothing like kindred spirit. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. It binds us and it puts us together. And so I employ those of us who are here this morning, those of us who are streaming with us, do not, do not. Take perspective of the board. Keep and put everything, prioritize everything, and keep everything in its place so that we can have life and have it stay its fullest like God intended. Amen? Amen. At this time, Monica is going to come forward. Please don't be doing it so far. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. Um, <laughs> I know I'm going to take up with more of it. But um, yeah. So at this time we're gonna have for sharing members of the message. There it is, there it is, there it is. Okay. So that should have come before the video. Alright, so anyone at this time, if you I just did my little piece, so I guess I, I, I opened the floor up anyway. Um just come and share, you know, see what you have. I make mean, sure and tell us who you are.
children. This is a real example of a virtuous mother, a virtuous woman, and I will never forget her. Mom, God bless you. God bless everyone.
a pastor. You were a group contributor of spiritual guidance. And it might be 20 years, 20 days for senior. We were contemporaries. We saw things from the same band. In fact, so much that after we met, Sister Cupid and the other Cupid, my wife and I, went to Barbados. We, we had a choice of different islands we could go to. We chose that because of our experience of them. But I can tell you, family, that the orchid, to me, reminds me of Sister Cupid. The simple simplicity of the stem from up to the beauty of the bloom. If you observed her long enough to go beyond the stem, you saw a beautiful spirit. And a spirit that everyone has talked about being a very straightforward, giving person. And I am grateful for the call from the other people letting me know what was taking place in where, as I consider it a privilege to tell you that I am grateful for the moments and the times that I spent with them. God bless you, family. And as was said by the preacher, love as much as you can all the time. All we have is time. So give it to someone. And if you never remember anything else about what I'm saying today, just remember that God doesn't spell love the way we do it. We do it with the E. God spells it G I V E. God bless you.
Especially for a few minutes. If you're going to laugh, it's not taking too long. So, we're going to miss uh, Mr. Vanessa. Even when she was here, when we visit her, she, you know, we always have a joke. We do not leave this house without a joke. And that we're going to miss, I only encourage you to stay really strong. The Lord is with you. And that was a scripture that says, I think it's been said many times here, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It's very true. And may God help you all to remember this and keep strong in faith. Do not give up on the Lord. And Brother Cupid will always come by to have a few laughs. <laughs> Shall we continue in sin that grace? 
is minimal. 